Okay, so uh, continuing from where we left off, uh, all I've done is kind of um, model some boxes and uh, make the subtractions for the windows, uh, kind of based on um, you know the placement of uh, some of these uh, things in elevation. Just kind of lining up my elevation. Uh, Again, like I showed you in the beginning, uh, rotating the elevation and lining it up to the house. Uh, so now I'm going to continue just by kind of giving you a quick lesson on uh, how to model some of the more detailed stuff. I'm going to start with the fireplace. And um, uh, also do the kind of windows and the curtain wall. I'm going to do this main wall right here. Uh, and then you guys can kind of fill in the rest based on that. I've also started a little bit to model the doors. This one's pretty simple. Uh, and I think, you know, for the most part, you'll be able to model these doors kind of by uh, just using rectangles and, and lining them up to these dimensions. For instance, if you were to measure uh, you know, the depth of this door, or you could even actually just measure, obviously, the distance of the opening divided by four. So we could say, you know, not a rectangle, so box, 2.5, 2 inches, and then set the height to the door. You can just copy that across. You can model some of those doors and stuff. Obviously, that one's a little bit different. OK, so I'm going to use the plan. And I've just kind of lined it up again uh, to my model. I'm going to go into top view. And I'm going to draw, first of all, uh, the rectangle for my fireplace. Kind of line it up like that. Okay. And I'm also going to draw at this point uh, the rectangle for uh, the kind of opening, uh, which we might just do. So we're going to snap to the edge of the window because that's where we know the uh, starts, and then snap to the inside of our. Uh, wall there. Okay. And then I can just move this rectangle, hit V for vertical, down to where the window is, because that's where our ledge goes to. Okay. And I'm actually going to just extrude this straight down, make sure the set to solid. Okay. And I'll do the same for this rectangle. There we go. So first of all, I could uh, set these to the layer scoria, because that's what they're made out of. Uh, and I would also go in here then, and I think you guys have a section. Oh, maybe not. It shows the height of the fireplace? Uh, no, OK. Well, if you happen to know what it is, uh, you can go ahead and do it properly. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is also just trace. Uh, so for this, I'll use a polyline. I'm going to kind of trace. Uh, first of all, I'll draw a line along the midpoint, the midline, because I really want to make sure this is symmetrical. And then I would just kind of trace out the profile of the fireplace and plan. OK, and then I could mirror it across the uh, center line I just made, join those two lines. OK. And maybe we can find it in a picture. Roughly what that fireplace looks like. Here we go. OK, so it looks like just a straight extrusion for the most part. OK, and maybe it goes up to 
it looks like it goes up to the same height as the window, so we can just use that as a reference. We'll use move vertical. I'll move it down to where the top of the window is. And I'm also going to close this line because I want to make a closed uh, volume that I can subtract from the wall. And I'll go extrude curve, move it down to the bottom, delete the original outline. And again, I'll just use a Boolean difference. Actually, before I do that, let me make a copy of this because we're going to have to uh, cut it out of the wall as well as this uh, fireplace we just made. And I'll just hit the option in place. Okay. So Boolean difference. Just choose one of the extrusions. Then for the last Boolean difference, the original wall. Okay, great. So that's our uh, kind of interior fireplace. Uh, and then I could do the same. I don't know if you guys have dimensions for these openings as well. Uh, but it kind of looks like they more or less line up to uh, the vertical of the fireplace. And maybe I'll just copy that dimension. So oops, if I measure what this distance is, about a foot. OK. So let me make a box. And I'm just going to make it the height of the fireplace for right now. And then I'll scale it back by a foot. So 3.14, 2.14. Oops, make sure you scale 1D, not 3D. 2.14. And then I could do the same for the height. I mean, it actually looks like it's a little bit scale windy. Looks like it's a little bit lower. Or not quite as thick. Okay. And I can copy this. I'm going to snap to the bottom left corner. Again, I'll hold shift and just tap the tab, constrain it to moving in one direction. And I can snap it to the inside of the fireplace. Scale 1D. Go to the other side. Let's see if we can mirror this. Sure. Okay, that looks pretty good. I could select this box and do a Boolean difference as well. Select all three of the voids, and there we go. That's how you would model the kind of fireplace. Uh, and then I'll quickly do uh, a tutorial on the. Um, uh, glass uh, wall on the inside. It should kind of give you a reference, a point of reference for how to do all the rest of the windows. Looking at these ones in here, uh, and then how to uh, model the frame framing for the windows over here. Okay, so I'm going to go back to top view, and let's. There's my move this down a little bit to below where my slab is. I could just hide my slab for the moment. And actually, I should make a new layer anyway. I'll call this a steel windows. OK. So first, I'm actually just going to divide, cut out where the door is. I'm just going to work by drawing lines for right now. So I can go back into layer one and kind of mark out where the door belongs. Uh, then I would take my original two lines that I used to draw that wall, split them, and select those two lines I just made. OK. Then I would take this line, and I'm going to use the command divide. And I need. Uh, Basically, I need to know exactly where these would be spaced if they were all evenly spaced. And if I divide it into three, I should get four points, right? One at each end and two in the middle. And then for this one, I'll select it and just divide it into two. There we go. And so now I can kind of copy these vertical lines. OK. Uh, so again, I'm going to go back onto my steel windows layer, and I'm going to put a line back here. Not so. I'm going to extrude all these lines. And uh, basically form the uprights uh, for the window framing. 
So we just go extrude curve, extrude up to the top of uh, where I know the ceiling is. And I could go select last. And I'm going to use the command offset surface SRF. I want to choose the option for both sides. And I'm going to set the width to, you know, uh, and you can use it, you can figure this out by measuring your uh, um, elevations or sections. But I'm going to set the width to, I don't know, 316. Remember that that will be double because you have both sides turned on. Make sure it's set to solid and then press enter. So I'm sorry, I meant to uh, set it to 316 of an inch. So let me try that one more time. Offset surf, both sides, oops, and under distance, 316, and then just do the little quote symbol for inches and press enter. Okay, pretty good. Uh, so I think, yeah, basically the way this is built is there's a kind of framing uh, along the bottom and top and down below. Uh, and then there's a, you know, a kind of internal frame that holds the individual panels of glass or like these steel panels that uh, close up at the bottom. Uh, so again, I could do the same down here. I can extrude this curve. Extruding up, you want to just reset the distance or the direction. I would just click in two points, hold shift, and I'm going this way. And then I'll just snap to the depth. And I suppose we should do the same for the door, because it looks like it's kind of constructed out of the same general stock. Okay, I'll select all three of those extrusions and offset surface. Okay, and then I could also copy those. Hit the option vertical. And I want to snap to the midpoint. And snap to the midpoint. And then I would also copy it and uh, set it to whatever the height of this is, which I believe if we can look at that fireplace image, perhaps it's a little bit uh, higher than, oh, this is a small image. It looks a little bit higher than where the fireplace goes. You guys, again, you guys probably have the exact dimensions, but I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. Hit vertical. Bring it up to about there. Okay, awesome. Uh, and then, <clears throat> uh, so now I would actually, oh, I didn't realize there were two kind of spaces there. So the first space, I guess, is just part of that wall panel. So for that, I would actually just take this and copy it over. And then it looks like the door you know, the distance of this panel and this panel is about the same. So I would just copy it again by the same uh, increment. Okay. And I wonder if I don't have those. Well, whatever. Um, okay. And then I would actually uh, go ahead in here and uh, model uh, the framing. So I'm going to do this in a slightly different way. I'm going to make a rectangle, or I'm sorry, I'm actually going to make a plane. I'm going to go under here, under plane, choose the option, vertical plane. And then I want to snap to the inside. So I'm using the, uh, the int or the intersection uh, object snap to model a surface that's roughly the size of the in inside of that. And then, I could go ahead and make, uh, um, let's see. Oh, maybe I do want a rectangle. Sorry about that. So draw a rectangle instead, three point. So again, snap to the inside. Okay. Then I'll select that rectangle. I'm going to offset it. First, uh, I'll choose the distance. 
of the thickness of my mullion because I know there's a space in between the framing and the window frame. And I'll select that in inside one, offset it again. Okay. Then I'm actually going to choose those two outlines and I'm going to use the command planar surface. Or you can also click on this button right here. Planar surf. And it should make a surface between the two outlines, which is great. Uh, then I can also select just the interior one. Again, go planar surf. Okay. And then this guy, I'm going to extrude surface. And again, I'm not sure what the exact depth of this is. You guys will probably know. I could delete the original, and then this guy, I could just move it back into the frame. And then on the back side, uh, let's see. Actually, maybe the best way is just to move that right to the midpoint of the inside of the frame. Okay. So that's the first panel. And then we know there's a panel um, behind it that has glass, which I believe is kind of framed by a, a series of angle iron sections. Um, so I could actually choose my original two curves. I'm sorry, my original two curves. And I'm going to copy them to the other side. And I'm not totally sure here. Maybe this is not quite as thick. I could offset it by a bit less. 0 0.015 perhaps. Uh, and then I'm going to offset this again, the interior one I just made, uh, by the depth of the angle iron, which is maybe 0 0.06, something like that. So what we could do here uh, is actually, well, you know what, actually I think there's a better way to do this. Delete those lines. What I'm going to do instead is I'm actually going to draw the profile of the angle iron. So somewhere else I could just draw a polyline, just somewhere out in space. And I'm just going to make a right angle, call this maybe one inch or even less probably three quarters of an inch hold shift and I can rotate it and join it so I just have an angle like so offset curve oops I'm sorry just offset uh, I'm gonna offset it inward I want to offset it by point uh, 0, 0.015 maybe 0.01 or something like that. And under cap, I'm going to click on cap, change it to flat. All right, so we have to set the distance again, 0.01. Okay, and then it should make a closed kind of outline like that. Now I'm going to move this profile in to where my curve was. And I'm going to snap to the midpoint of that curve right there. So now I should have a curve that represents the outline of the inside of my mullion and a profile of my um, angle art. Then I'm going to use the option sweep one, or the command sweep one. First it'll ask me for a rail, and I'm going to choose that rectangle. When I'm done, uh, it'll ask me for a cross section curve, and I'll choose my angle iron. Go ahead and press enter. Center again. Okay, and it should pretty much make a nice, uh, clean, uh, like it's going to kind of extrude that profile along the, uh, oh, it looks like it's not quite working. Is it? Oh, yeah, it's working fine. Okay. So it should extrude that profile around the uh, edges of my rectangle. So the location that I place it relative to the rectangle is important. I'll click OK. And there we go. 
Now I move this guy into my frame. And I could actually mirror it along the inside edge. Move that over a little bit. Because of course in there we actually have a glass panel. So I copy this. Oops. Or I can just extrude it as is. Extrude curve. There we go. That's our glass surface. And I can actually make another layer and call it glass. Change it to that layer. And uh, what I'm going to try and do here is actually just copy the whole assembly. So I'll select both sets of angle iron, type in copy, move it up here. And then in order to uh, create at the right height, I can type in the command move edges, or move edge, I guess. Select all those edges. We should be grabbing the glass and the top edges of the angle iron. I'll press enter, snap to the top corner, and then move it on up to the top of the panel, like so. Okay. And then you can pretty much just copy that assembly around and use the same method to, uh, to modify uh, the dimensions. So these three should all be identical. The door will be a little bit different. And those two will be identical uh, to each other, at least maybe not to the original two. Uh, okay, uh, so that should pretty much give you a good idea of how to model this stuff using uh, extrude and sweep and offset. And I will leave the rest uh, to you guys.